Now, from the University of Okaboji, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. I'm Jeff Thee, and here with me today, State Senator Dave Rowley of Senate District Number 1 here in the state of Iowa with us today. And uh, welcome, Senator. Thanks for being with me. Thank you, Jeff. It's great to be here. You, it, how's your new job? <laughs> That's the easiest way of asking you. How's the new job? It's awesome. Is it? It really is. Good. It's uh, it, it's a an experience that I don't think anybody could ever say they were totally prepared for until you go down there to the Capitol and really uh, sit in that chair, uh, sit in those subcommittee and committee meetings and hear all, all the things that are going on, yeah. especially right now. As you know, we just went through the the first five weeks and the funnel. Yeah. And so a lot of bills, uh, that's where bills they go from the subcommittee level up to the standing committee yep. and then they're passed out of standing committee to go to the floor uh, for debate. And this is uh, that first uh, major step in the process. And by participating in that, it, it, it was a whole new world. I, I can tell you that I probably sat in uh, over 300 bills in committee. Wow. Uh, to listen to, uh, to go through. Sometimes you feel like it's on a revolving, you know, quite a schedule to do that, and, and it is. Uh, but you hear so many different topics, so many different issues. Things that you didn't even know were an issue. Right. Let's face it. I mean, I hear it on the county level. I didn't know that was a deal. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you hear from your constituents, which is awesome, and you hear both sides of the, of the story, yep. how this will uh, affect them. And why this is important, or why this this is important, not not to do this. Yeah. And uh, that information is always welcome. It gives me an opportunity to ask a lot of questions from the other le legislators, and um, so I've gotten to know. That's the other part of it. You get to know the senators very well. You know yep. your caucus. Yeah. Um, and you also get uh, to be exposed, you know, to the other other side of the aisle. Yeah. And you make uh, new friends. You really do. Yeah. Or you make. You get acquaintances and you start to visit with them uh, about uh, not so much about the issues sometimes, but uh, you know that in committee, that's where it all opens up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been quite an experience. I, I know some of these huge issues are always education uh, because you have to have the uh, SSA passed. Uh, that's uh, state student aid, yep. uh, and and the the budget item for that has to be uh, completed within the first thirty days since the governor's condition uh, uh, condition of the state right. address, and so we accomplished that this week, and that was on Monday that that came to the floor for debate, and that's very exciting. Oh, I bet it was. It was. It was. Uh, so you you have uh, just a chance for um, the senators to. Uh, discuss and debate the pros and cons and uh, as it turned out I, I think it was a very good uh, result and it's something that I, I think will benefit uh, all, all islands. Yeah. Uh, we increased the budget actually on uh, school funding 160 million dollars right. through that bill. Uh, it was a two and a half percent. Right yeah two and a half percent. It was and um, which you know, it wasn't what everybody wants, uh, but I can tell you there's always a range that they work with. Um, but I, I think it was very but historically important. kind of a large increase, though, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it was it was it was done right. I think on the counter, you know, it's because of the uh, 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 transitory CPI or uh, inflation, as it's also known. Right. You know, that tend to attract a lot of attention, but uh, you know, we're holding steady. We've got a budget to go by, and it's, it's proven to be very successful in the past for the state of Iowa. Yeah. And I think this is a, a good budgeted item going forward. Uh, not everybody gets gets what they want, but again, a $160 million increase is going to be very helpful. Indeed. Uh, and also along this line, uh, they increased the, uh, the uh, cost per pupil increase, went from $7,227 to uh, $7,413. Yeah. So it had a good increase on that yeah. so for the cost per pupil. Right. So that, but that's a heck of an undertaking to get that education done in, in, in that amount, in, in of, amount time, of time. Amount of time. Because yeah, yeah. it's not like it's the only thing you're working on. No. You know, you it, think it, about that. If, uh, if that was your only job, that'd still be tough. And it's a major part. I know the education committee, uh, both sides of the aisle, worked very hard. You know, to get their points across and. And to find out uh, what their what their goals were. Yeah. Of course, you have the governor's you know plan, and you have the Senate's plan, and you have the House's plan, and those all came together. Uh, the House did a great job. You know, John Wills over there, and, and Megan Jones do a fantastic job. Yeah. 
and uh, having them down there to bounce ideas off of is is excellent and it gives uh, gives me a comfort in knowing that uh, how how this all works yeah. you know is, is really for the good of Iowans and yeah. for the good of us up here in Northwest Iowa. And, and the final product was pretty close to what the governor had asked for, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. it was. And uh, one thing that's enhanced by this too, I I don't know if you remember, but in the condition of, of the state, Governor Reynolds also said there'd be a thousand dollar. Uh, one-time bonus payment right. for all those that that worked hard and stuck with it to keep those kids in school, yeah. you know, and to keep schools open. And when you look at that as, as that one thousand uh, dollar amount, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're looking at it, say, if the salaries were an average of fifty thousand dollars, that's two percent right there. Exactly. So, so I try to look at the big picture yeah. on on this budgeted year, and I, I'm thinking optimistic and positive about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what else have you found uh, that you've been working on uh, since you've been in Des Moines? Uh? Well, I've worked on a, a couple bills, as you and I discussed earlier. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you come up with an idea, and this is how it works in in uh, legislative uh, halls, is that you, you do your best to sponsor a bill, you get it out there, uh, they go through subcommittee, and they may not make it through the standing committee for a ver variety of reasons. Right. Um, it may be that you don't have support from your own caucus or you know that it's such an uh, issue that uh, along with just a la little lack of support on your own caucus and then with the uh, other side voting possibly a no or a down vote on all of it, it's yeah. not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go. Yeah. So I think our, our goal is to make sure we're weeding through all those bills and that's why they call it the funnel. Yeah. So you, you put it all together, you have those discussions and you, you weed those out so that the ones remaining will be the ones that we will want to debate on the floor. Right. And it deserves debate. That, that, that's where, yeah. where it all comes together. And um, I, I talked to former Senator Zach Whiting, state mm -hmm. senator, yeah. and uh, he said, you know, Dave, uh, in legislature, it's always good to move those bills up because they all deserve that chance to be heard. Absolutely. And in almost most cases, they, they are the ones that you need to hear and, and, and uh, that, that are going to make it to the floor. So uh, that was one thing. Of course, other issues uh, came up. Uh, I don't know if people are aware of the eminent domain bill. Yes. Yeah, that was the Senate file 2160. Uh, Senator Jeff Taylor wrote that up, and I was so, so happy he did. And, and Jeff, I've gotten to know him real well, yeah. Jeff Taylor. Yeah. And, um, and I said, thanks, Jeff. This will this, help settle a lot of things. Uh, and that bill was written to say you, you couldn't, uh, the IUB would be restricted not to let a, a private enterprise or whatever yep. use eminent domain. Right. And, and I can tell you from county standpoint and counties that we've talked to, nobody has an issue if, if landowner, farmer wants to talk to the... Right. That's their business. Absolutely. They can sign, but it's the eminent domain that everybody goes, that's not fair. That's right. not right. 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 So yeah. So the bill was written to to carve that out and specify it. But then, um, and you might be able to help me with this. Uh, I I talked to a few people that said, yeah, but what about the private utilities? What about a private gas uh, company? What about a co-op? You know, how yeah. how how are you going to handle that yeah. in this bill? And that that was why it died for lack of support. Yeah. Because it it was too broad. Now, does that mean it's out of the the question? I mean, as we go along. Uh, no, no right. but this session, it's kind of tough unless, I, I don't know how they would be revived. Yeah, right? and, and it would be tough too. But there's always a fly in the ointment, you know. Right, and, and, um, right. And, and I know a lot of people were disappointed in that. And uh, I had some uh, real frank discussions with farmers, uh, not only uh, in our area, but throughout the area. Yeah. You know, and so uh, these are, it, it's a... These are private companies, and they'll need to negotiate that out. And as landowners, say no. Yeah. And and hopefully there's enough of a pushback on that. So uh, uh, you you might sense where I lie on this issue. Yeah, and myself as well. It, yeah. It, it's kind of like the wind turbines. They yeah. talk to the farmer, and, and uh, yeah, I do. No, I don't. And they pay for the engineering and to look at it and everything. And, uh, and ultimately, the landowner says yay or nay. Yeah. Yeah. deal over you right. know and and that's that's our personal freedom yeah. that, that's our freedom that's why we own land and that's why we do things so I I definitely empathize with with that yeah. side of the issue so we'll see how it plays out it's uh, uncomfortable for a lot of people yeah. but um, 
But it's it's uh, we'll we'll see how it just how it has it to go through the process. It really does. Yeah, exactly. Really does. Tell me about the pizza roller bill. <laughs> set of set of file twenty one ninety. So as a freshman senator, <laughs> uh, this this was a bill that was out there, and they asked me to chair that uh, subcommittee and floor manage it. And it was a real simple bill uh, for Casey's General Store specifically, uh, and, and any other any other business. Yeah. Uh, but we'll use Casey's as the example, sure. Because frankly, that's that's where it all kind of came up, and that's how bills happen. Yeah. So in sixteen or seventeen, I think seventeen states they operate in. Iowa was the only is the only state that requires that to operate the pizza dough roller machine. Yeah. You have to be eighteen years of age. Uh-huh. And so they needed a bill to remove that restriction and to comply not only with those other states where uh, Casey's operates, but with the uh, federal uh, labor standards. Right. Uh, yeah. So that was another part of it. And so that was a privilege for me to get that bill and to chair the subcommittee. And uh, of course, everybody wanted free pizza uh, <laughs> while, while I was going through the subcommittee. Uh, it got a, a, a very unanimous vote up. You know, to go to standing committee, yeah, and then I was able to floor or manage that. Then and, and uh, we got a, a vote for everybody again. Again, a, a pretty non-controversial bill. Non-controversial, but when you think about it, Senator, you know these businesses in our area that they rely on the high school students or whatever yeah. to be the backbone of of their business. Yeah. Well, I can't use you till you're 18. Right. Well, I'll be gone by then. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, exactly. And not only that, Jeff, but w- when do we get our learner's permit? Age 14 yeah, to drive a car? Right. Uh, when, when do farmers and farmers' kids operate a truck, a pickup truck, and drive that out to the field? Don't ask my dad because I think I did it way too early. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. So, I know. so heavy so, machinery. So there, there, I, there was somebody who said, you know, what about miners? Are are they safe to do this? Well, I have a good friend who does pizza uh, up in uh, in a business. And he explained the double roller, pizza roller, and there's a kill switch, there's a foot switch on different models, yeah. and uh, the protections are there. And I would think that any uh, any working 15-year-old, 16-year-old, 17-year-old, if they need to use that machine, I'm, I'm confident they can handle yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So it was a it was a real win. And then I got to uh, go into debate on the floor. And, uh, of course, it was all yes votes. Yeah. It really was. Well, that's a nice way to get kind of get the foot in the door and, and get used to the procedure. And, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it was, uh, that was that was a good uh, good bill. It was my first yes vote and uh, to to uh, be on the floor of the Senate and, and do that. And, and it's all about experience. Yeah. And once you arrive down there, Jeff, it's... They say it's like drinking water from a fire hose, and truly it is. Yeah, uh, you're starting uh, with what you thought it was, and then what you realize it, it, it is. Yeah, and then uh, I can't say that it's fully realized, but it's a great, great uh, system we have government. Oh, it really is best process in the world. You know, it we, truly we may is. not always agree with how things turn out. And we won't. And we won't. And we won't. But I, I can assure anybody listening to this broadcast that there's wonderful people on both sides of the aisle. Uh, they all get up and go to bed and work all day or whatever, the same yeah. that we all do. Yeah. Uh, they all have families and they've all gone through tragedies or they're dealing with some sort of burden of their own. Yeah. But they've also had different experiences. We've got farmers. We have a small manufacturing owner. Uh, we have... Uh, one one individual I, I enjoyed meeting on the other side of, I, of the aisle is Tony Bisignano. Uh, you know, he's, he's as old, not old, I should say that. So <laughs> he, he's a huge guy, but he's been around as a very, very uh, interesting fellow. Yeah. And uh, you get to know them. And then my colleagues that I get to know, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Senator Taylor over in Sioux County uh, at Dort College. He's, I believe, a constitutional uh, law type uh, pr- uh, professor, yeah. uh, brilliant guy. Yeah, and he came up with that bill, and I thought, oh, that that was perfect. That twenty one sixty was yeah. perfect. Um, so we have great working relationships among everybody that's down there, and that's what gets bills going, and that's what helps support it. Yeah, you know, it's one thing I've always said. You know, we sometimes we cite the differences in our ideology too much, but 
in essence, we all want the best education for our children. We all mm -hmm. want great health care for our citizens. It's a matter of what path are we going to take to get there. Right. Right. And it doesn't mean that you're bad and I'm right or you're an idiot and and, and sometimes we fall into that too much. Exactly. And it's our life experiences that guide us. This is the way I see it could be working. Right. And, and okay, I differ with you and you work together. Right. You know, so. And, and along that line, and, and maybe I'm being careful, I don't want to be too careful not to bring this up. Uh, for example, the obscenity or the pornography yep. images in school curriculums. Right. Um, when that came up and to my attention, uh, nowhere in our discussions with caucus was this about all school districts. Nowhere in that was about uh, branding all teachers or all school districts right. uh, and, and the administrations as being horrible, horrible people because it isn't in all districts. It right. isn't in all yeah. all, all of these uh, uh, classrooms. But let's say there's two or three. Okay, we'll just focus on that. Is that the right thing to do and to have certain materials there? And then the argument, again, is always on both sides of that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, some would say this is literary and it helps uh, kids work through certain things and all that. On the other side of the issue, it's clearly uh, graphic, pornographic, material yeah. and if you and I were, were walking down the street and handed that to a 14 year old yeah we would be guilty of we'd be distributing in a second wouldn't we it, we it's it it, it it may be a misdemeanor but yeah. or, or if we were to lay that out in a public setting like your 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 public yeah uh, the courthouse or something like Absolutely. that I guess uh, to me the litmus test is how many people would uh, embrace that and find that interesting how many would find it revolting mm -hmm. and in my in my opinion I think most uh, would find that terribly revolting yeah and I also side with uh, families I also side with uh, adolescents and children reaching puberty and going through things where they're confused as much as they are anyway. When well, their bodies are changing so quickly. It's difficult to think that those materials are there or somebody could steer them to that. And, and, and look, I'm not naive. You could find that on the internet right. or anywhere you want. My point is, it doesn't belong in, in that school, yeah. really. It, we want to be a safe yeah educational environment exactly know? yeah and that that's what struck me and there's those that'll disagree and I understand sure. that uh, but by the same token I would also push back a little bit because in our society we have seen book man banning of Huckleberry Finn Uncle Tom's Cabin Gone with the Wind yeah, Grapes of Wrath I can remember it, yeah so for other reasons I so you know where does it stop where does it begin but to me, this was a no-brainer issue to to want to make sure that uh, we pass that bill, yeah. 2198. Yeah. And, uh, and and here's another thing about the process. No matter what side of, the, side of the issue you're on, we're addressing it. And it will go to the floor, and it will be a debate. And that's how government works, yeah. and that's how it should work. Yeah. I don't like government overreach any more than the next guy. Right. Uh, but uh, in my short time down there, there's some things that are hot issues. And I, I will be honest with everybody here. I will address those issues as yeah. best I can. Yeah. So it's, it's been quite a learning experience. Well, I, we'll I, put it that way. Well, I'm glad it's been a, a good uh, learning experience. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So we got uh, one more funnel coming up, don't yep. we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, again, being a new guy, there's where all runs through. You have debate and then flips. And then you have the House, and then you have the Senate. We we start to combine and and vote on different. Will Wills and Jones will know a lot more about this. I probably should prep for that. <laughs> but then you go through all the way through the second funnel of yeah. what's going to be you know then up for signature for law. Yeah. yeah. And then. So, yeah, and, yeah, I, and I haven't got experienced yet. And yeah. Yeah. Oh well, the budget we've got a uh, budget right now uh, is 8.2 million. It looks like that's okay. what the budget's going to that's be. That's where it's going to end up then. Okay. And I and I want to tell you the total new new spending of this is 283 million dollars. Okay. Yeah. So that's a total new new spending, and um, so uh, a couple things in there that I found interesting that I want to want to mention is that. Uh, there's an increase of 71.2 million for mental health funding. 
So that that is going to be somewhat a shift from the counties, of course, yeah. and property tax. I know. Yeah. But that's that's going to make sure that that line item and help support that as well. Um, the budget itself is uh, very strong, uh, so that's one area. Uh, the other is uh, taxes. You probably heard a little bit about that. Yeah. So you had the governor's plan and you had the house plan. And it appears to me, at least the Senate, I'll share with you what the Senate was, and, and it, it's going to be closer to 4% for the flat tax by 2027 okay. is what I understand. Uh, but the Senate bill originally was 3.6% over an incremental uh, reduction over the next several years. Okay. Uh, so that's one high, uh, hot item. And what that'll do is it'll reduce our income tax rate from being the uh, eighth highest in the na nation mm -hmm. to the fourth lowest. And so that gives us a little bit of leeway to put more money in every taxpayer's pockets. Yeah. And I think right now when we're talking 7.5% inflation, and hopefully, and I hope, it's going to be transitory. You know, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But in, in, the, in the meantime, we're going to reduce those income taxes for Iowans and put a little more jingle, if you will, in their pocket. A little pocket. more a little jingle in the pocket, and it also makes us more competitive. It does. You know, we've got neighboring states that uh, oh, yeah. are lower, and, and when whether it's uh, young families or, you know, they're looking at uh, where can we, and then let's take a look at Iowa, and mm -hmm. ooh, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> a little high mm -hmm. there. Right. And, right. And then they look elsewhere and go elsewhere. And they do. We and we're an aging state. We are. We are. So I think the intent of uh, the tax uh, relief for Iowans was to lower that tax rate. Give breaks to some people that are 65 or at an older age. Right. You know, yep. and uh, also I know in the governor's bill, she had, uh, I think, uh, uh, absolutely no income tax on uh, like uh, pension plans or ESOP. If you remember, they won't uh, tax on that capital gain right. yep. within that ESOP. Yep. Uh, so there's some benefits to that. And I have to tell you that if you do have an IRA or you do have a pension and you're 45 or 50 years old and you're living in the state of Iowa, you, you just increase your retirement benefits quite a bit. Yeah. And you have to think twice about where you want to move from there. Yeah. And I think that's very competitive with a very close neighbor that we have uh, as far as states are concerned. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, I tell you, when you're 45 and you think this is better for my retirement, 65 comes faster than you, you thought it was going to. It does, and a lot of us in life, uh, you know, we, we think that we're uh, giving to our 401ks or we're giving to those, uh, those vehicles for retirement, and all of a sudden we're probably about 56, 57 years old and going, holy cow, <laughs> yeah. I better step it up a notch. Yeah. You know, I always laughed about saying no more than X amount of dollars, what, 20,000 or something you could put in, and then you're going, oh. Yeah. Probably more than a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, th these are ways that uh, legislature and government can work for people. Yeah. And what that does, it supports economic development. It supports uh, retail sales. Sales. Yeah. Uh, it supports a lot of different avenues. Uh, one thing I think the legislature did very well a few years ago is to start tax internet purchases too, uh, so that when we were competing with those online businesses, one that starts with a capital A, yeah, uh, we were able to capture sales tax for that. And I think that helped the coffers of, of Iowa grow. It helped the coffers, and it's also only fair to our local businesses. It really is. They're all paying it. I know. Yeah. I know. And, and I, I want to see more retail personally. And I think that uh, most families and people growing up, I don't know if they like really returning clothes through the mail or how that works. So I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't find that. Uh, but uh, it is the world we live in. Yeah. You know, but so be it. It, it is more fair. Yeah. And we can be the beneficiary of that going forward, which I, I really, I'm glad the state of Iowa did that yeah. you know, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think so. it's helped a lot of things. Do you have a laundry list of things that... Uh, I, yeah, I, I can tell you that some of the bills I sat in, uh, of course, uh, on human resources, I serve on that, labor and business mm -hmm. and judiciary. Uh, human resources, I had some examples here, like a mom's bill to promote healthy pregnancies and childbirth uh, through uh, nonprofit organizations. And this is a little bit out of the realm, but yeah. we wanted to vote that up and make sure that we're doing everything we can to support other interested parties in helping moms and families. Yeah. 
and help them walk through unintended uh, pregnancies all the way through the birth of that child. Right, right. Uh, that is a bill, uh, SSB 3145. Okay. Uh, one that was near and dear to me on a personal level is newborn screening. Yeah. Um, this was passed on a 13-0 vote in our um, standing committee, and I, I would expect it's going to go all the way. And what this is, it's pre-screening for newborn infants uh, in, the say, the third trimester as you're going along to make sure any congenital uh, abnormalities, uh, something along that line, are caught early. Yes. And I will share with our viewers that uh, personally, we lost our fourth child because of a congenital uh, defect, a very small hole in the diaphragm which forced abdominal organs up into the chest of our son, yes. Sean, and, uh, it, and, and he did not survive. Uh, so I guess w what struck me on this bill, I thought, oh, thank goodness we've got something so cool. Yeah. And it's such a pleasure to be a part of a bill like that. Yeah. Uh, because if, if this was in place today, you could do in vitro uh, surgeon, surgical procedures and help repair yeah. things and try to get things going. So it's amazing how far we've come in 30 years. And so when you see a bill like this, uh, it, and every legislator will tell you this too, that they they laughed or they cried or they they touched they were touched or their emotion mm -hmm. and that bill affected them in some way and this yeah. in this way it was it was very good well, to and, see that you know, here you are we talked about personal experiences and and you paint it forward yeah, to, yeah. then maybe others don't have to to suffer that right and and it's it's a help help future babies born and uh, help eliminate some of that question yeah. about. Uh, Will they be healthy and take that a little bit off the table? Right. Uh, the other hot issue I could say is the athletic eligibility based on sex. Yes. Uh, that was quite a bill. Uh, now I I wasn't in on that, but that was an education. But I, it it was a a vote of ten to four along party lines mm -hmm. in order to have um, men's sports compete with men's sports right. and women's sports. All compete has to with do with women's sports. transsexuals who identify transgender. The, 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 yes. Yeah, born that, a male, identify as a female, and then they go play right. girls basketball or, or right. whatever. And, and again, it's a hot issue. It's something that needs to be brought up through the legislature and discussed and brought forward for a debate. Yeah. Healthy debate. We've got to have that out and make sure. Because uh, I, I stand on the, the issue that you can't, I, I don't like the idea of mudding gender at all yeah. as far as especially sports i mean we we had the young lady i can't remember her name the track star mm -hmm. in iowa she wrote a beautiful editorial uh, uh, addressing this right and she's been vilified since she did that yeah and attacked and all that and she visited our uh, chamber and uh, we w welcomed her and as a fact right now today her records uh in in state uh, uh track uh, there's 83 or 84 young men or boys that are faster than her. Well, there you go. Yeah. You know, you you have that sort of transgender approach to it. Is that fair? Right. And and it you, everybody. It's funny too. It's it does boil down to an issue of fairness. What is fair? What isn't fair? Right. Not everybody's satisfied on the outcome. Well, what's what's fair? And that's what the debate is for. The that's open what debate. the debate is for. Yep. Of course, uh, this governor's school choice bill, as I said, that came out. Uh, interesting one that we found in human resources was fertility fraud, uh, a law that we have uh, that it prohibits a person from engaging in a practice or act where they know or reasonably should have known they were providing false information to people that say donated. The, the reproductive, reproductive uh, yeah, yep, yep. right, and uh, certainly could say it, uh, but this bill addressed that. I had no idea that there are cases where people got on um, uh, me and twenty three or what is uh, some of the genome, you know, things that are where we're trying to find our heritage line, right, and right, and so you you know, spit in, you find out, and, and suddenly they find out that the same same person fathered like a hundred. And what happens is that there's donations made, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of fraud dealing with, with that, unfortunately, in the fertility world. Yeah. How crazy. I mean, <laughs> isn't it amazing some of the things you learn? Like, like, it's, it's, I wouldn't, if I watched an episode on that on, on uh, Law & Order SVU, I'd be like, ah, that's too far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs> so, and there it is. 
I, and I can leave it at that. Yeah. You know, uh, but it's it's been uh, really interesting. Uh, like the pizza roller dough, or pizza dough roller machine, that was in uh, labor and business, and then these human resource ones that yeah. touched the heart, and then judiciary boils down to uh, what it, what is right and what isn't. Uh, and I I could bring up several, but I'm exposed to uh, to a lot of bills and enjoying it. It really is fascinating. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and how it affects us in Northwest Iowa, it, it it'll affect us in small ways and in large ways with some people, um, but I can assure you that all all the issues that are happening to us in Northwest Iowa are discussed down yeah. there. We're working very hard. To make sure voices are heard. Yeah, and I know you're always available to your constituents. Uh, Absolutely. Email, phone call, whatever it is. Yeah. And I, I will I will put a little bit of a, a disclaimer in there now. Okay. I I get a lot of emails and I do my best to answer all yeah. of them. I really do. Uh, so please be patient and also you can if you know me well you just give me a call. Okay. You know absolutely. Very good and and you will be running for full term. I'm glad you this brought November. it up. Yeah. yeah, I've been so distracted that I have a whole campaign ahead of me. Um, when I decided to run. I knew I had to run for the next uh, election, and uh, and and uh, I wanted to run because I really want to run now. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. That that means you feel you're doing something meaningful. Oh, it's it, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it it is awesome. So the district has changed. Uh, Lyon and Osceola drop off, and Winnebago and or uh, Kosuth and Winnebago add on, as does. Uh, uh, Emma County, yeah. which is really exciting because I, I have an office in Emma County. That's right, you Leonard, do. And uh, I know a lot of people over there. And then I've already been uh, visiting uh, K- uh, Kosuth and uh, Winnebago. And uh, the caucuses came back with great signatures. And okay. so I'm in the race. And uh, you will be seeing a lot more of me. And we'll be talking about that. Right. Um, I have to tell you that uh, I love this area. I want to represent the people well. Yeah. And I'm here to build relationships and represent you all very well. Very good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you for taking a few minutes. Nice to find out how, you, how you're enjoying the, the new job. You got it. <laughs> thanks, Jeff, for having me. And yep. thanks, everybody. And, Always a pleasure. And just uh, we'll be in touch. All right. Very good. Uh, State Senator David Rowley. Of course, uh, again, Iowa's first senatorial district here with me today. We want to thank him for taking a few minutes updating on things going down in Des Moines in the legislature. We thank you for watching us right here on Oak Road broadcast. Okaboji broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you in part by the Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake, Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman, and Erica Wachholz. Duckies Marine and Motorsports Repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, Dream Big, Plan Wisely, Live Well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. V Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. 